Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. It is cold and rainy today. It's probably in the mid-30s. Leaves are pretty, though. Hi, bossy pig. She's making progress on her hay bomb. She's got a lot of it spread out. Given the weather, as I was sitting inside drinking coffee this morning, I thought to myself, today would be a good day to tear something apart. And as it's begun to rain, I'm going to have to do it in the barn up here. This lady right here is the subject of my tearing a partiness. I guess it's gonna be a rainy day. Such is the season, at least I like the sound of rain on a metal roof. This is a good place to do the work over here and I brought the 504 up because I'm gonna need that too. And I'll show you what's going on here. On this side, this outer seal right there is leaking. You can see where it's sprayed all over the Tire and so there's a seal in here and there's also a bearing just inside the seal it may be just the seal but it may be the bearing as well maybe the bearings loosened up and it needs to be replaced and on the other side it's completely dry no problems here of course to get at that seal I got to take this big tire off and it's loaded with calcium chloride it's very heavy I thought for a while about how best to do that, how to get that heavy tire off. I don't know what it weighs. It might be a thousand pounds. I didn't look at the chart. Let's see. And what I came up with was to first take this fender off. Lefty Lucy now. There's just eight bolts holding it on. This is a 10 ton house jack or screw jack. My favorite jack. Is it okay to have a favorite jack? I do. I trust this jack to stay where I jack it to, whereas a hydraulic jack, yeah, probably all right, but I like this one better. We'll just jack it up a little bit for now. Let's see how this goes. My impact wrench is out of commission. It's a Milwaukee, one of the heavy, heavy duty ones, and it never worked right since I got it. Sometimes you'd press the trigger and nothing would happen. So I sent it back to the factory. Five year warranty. I don't have it now though. It's okay. Just like on the 856, must be some of these stripped out of the hole and they put a nut on them. Somebody before me. Some are fine thread, some are coarse thread. That's the way farmer fixes go. Not the nuts off the long ones. We'll spray them with a little bit of PB blaster here. Make them a little easier to turn out. I just want to get all these loose and make sure they turn all right. That one's going to be fun. That one's easy. And then jack it up some more and take weight off the tire. And before we get too far, set the brake and put the range selector in neutral. Since this is a hydro, we don't want the axles spinning while the tractor's off. You can mess up the hydro 
pulling these or pushing them without the engine running. Heavy breath. After yanking on that jack for a while, I got the left tire off the ground. The rims and wheel centers on this are one piece stamp steel, 34 inch diameter. I don't know why this tractor's got these on. This was an option for this tractor. Instead of the normal cast wheel center with the rim clamped on, and it attaches to the axle differently. So if I take out these bolts, I can pull the wheel off and then take the clamp off separately. I decided that was the best way to do it. This is, no, that one's not tough anymore. Must be taking the weight off that made the difference. A couple of these bolts are stripped in the hole and hard to turn. And I got to thinking about it. My original idea was to be able to lift this tire up with bucket loader and off. And I thought that taking the tire off of the clamp would be the best way to do that. But as I look at the clamp here, if I take this completely off and drop the lower clamp right out and slide it right out, then I can pick the tire a little bit and then pull it off with the bucket loader. I'm going to do that instead. That one's easy. That one's not. Oops, sorry about that. This may take a while. I'm going to be sore in places that I never thought I'd be sore in tomorrow. That's what mechanic work does when you're pulling wrenches. Uh-huh. These are the clamps. There's two separate ones. And they're both off now. Is very wimpy. Yep. Maybe I'm overthinking this. need to lift the wheel up I just needed to tip it over using tractor power the axle is only this diameter and the hole in the center without the clamp is big so you can just tilt it off and now we're gonna need to clean this off to get the seal out yep, yep. 
course you got four cans cleaner and all of them are just about empty there we go before i go any further here let's put a jack stand under here it's belt and suspenders there's not nearly as much weight on that screw jack as there was before with the tire wheel off. She just keeps running out. Let's look at what we've got here. We've got a cone bearing here. It's an international bearing. And it's just like an automotive wheel bearing in that you've got the cone bearing in the inner race here. And then you've got a cup, a bearing cup on the outside of it. And looking around it, all the bearing rollers are still in there but I don't think it's got the right preload on it. This is the INT manual for this tractor and this diagram right here is how the axle and bearing system works. There's the bull gear. Out here is the cap that I just pulled off. There's that outer bearing, that cone bearing, and then there's also an inner cone bearing that's by the bull gear inside the, inside the uh, final drive case. Now the older internationals like the A's, B's, C's, H's, and M's had ball bearings on the axles. Real easy, no preload, no adjustment. Then they went to using roller bearings starting with the 560 and these uh, cone bearings on the 656 because they could take more load. When you use a cone bearing you have to have preload on the bearing just like when you change the bearing, the hub bearing on a car and you preload it, you know, you crank down the nut a little bit and you spin the tire and you make sure it's got the right feel to it. What preload is on a cone bearing or a taper bearing, I sometimes call them, is if you imagine these two points are the, that bearing and then you have a cup that it fits into, you want that bearing to be the right distance into that cup so that the rollers are securely rolling and they're not loose or too tight because then you get too much friction and you get heat so you want the proper adjustment. And unlike a car there's no nut on the outside of this to tighten the bearings up so what International did is they put a shim pack on this cap and this ring here on this cap presses on what I call the outer race or the bearing cup the the out the outermost part of the bearing assembly and it pushes on it to load the bearings according to how many shims you've got in here and in the manual there's a complicated process where you first put this cap on by itself you torque two of the bolts down to a certain measurement and then you turn the axle and you do it again and then you start putting shims in and measuring with a feeler gauge how much thickness is left at a certain torque when you torque this down and then you can figure out what shims you need to put in. It's clear to me that this bearing needs to be at least the preload needs to be measured according to the manual and I may need to either go looking for some of these shims after I check it or I may need to get some shim stock and cut my own spacers out of that. Or really, just thinking about it here, the more shims you have, the further it's gonna push this cap out and the less it's gonna preload the bearing. So what I'm gonna need is less shim space. I've got two thick, two thicks and a thin here, so I may need to swap out a thick and make a thin one. We'll know when I do the process and see what shim is required.
Of course, the other route would be to replace the bearing, to say, well, this bearing's probably never been replaced and the tractor is close to the same age as me. The problem is to replace this bearing, you gotta pull the whole, well, you gotta get in the back end of the tractor through the PTO, you gotta pull the PTO unit off, get in the back end of the tractor, undo the snap ring on the bull gear, unbolt the axle, pull the whole axle and the axle housing here out in order to pull the axle shaft out and take the bearings out. I'm not doing up that up here in the barn with the weather turning and getting colder. That's a job for the new shop as well as checking out the other bearing. So I'm not going the replacement route. I'm gonna shim it to the proper dimension. That'll be an interesting exercise and run it with this bearing in it until it comes into the shop next winter hopefully when I have a new shop and I can tear it down and really assess things better. Oh geez it's raining again. Now you may be wondering with all these shims in here how does it make an oil seal? Well the way it does it is this protruding part fits into here and then right here against the bearing let me get it out. Well, come on out. There's an O-ring. And that O-ring sits against this tapered face here and makes the seal. So these shims are outside of the oil cavity. They don't, you don't have to worry about them leaking. Here's the axle seal on this outer cap. And it's a normal automotive type seal with a rubber lip on the inside. And that's the seal body in there. And then I think it's a double lip seal actually because if I run my finger around this side I can feel another lip on this. So this, this seal would be to keep dirt from coming in from the outside and this inner seal here would be to keep oil from inside from coming out. Older farm all tractors had a felt that would run around the inside of here outside the rubber seal and help keep dirt from hitting the seal but my memory of the parts manual is there was no felled on this one to begin with. It's Sunday afternoon and I got to go in and make pork roast for dinner. What I'm going to do is I'll clean up that cap that I pulled off and on another day we'll check the shims. I'll show you how to go through that process. Meanwhile I'll order a new seal and o-ring for it. You may remember this is one of four projects I got to get done this winter. Four fix-it projects Number one was the uh, H belly pump and I'm waiting for parts on that before I put it back together. Number two is this seal here. Number three is the hydraulic pump on the Super C needs to be rebuilt. Number four is I need to do a lot of work on the manure spreader, a new deck on the manure spreader, new wood deck and needs new sprockets and uh, apron chain. And then long project number five is actually pulling the 856 into my little shop. I think it'll just fit in there. And then getting into the transmission, fixing the detent plates and the shifting, new wiring, uh, change all the bushings, bearings, tires on the front end. That's the big project of the winter and I'm trying to get these other four projects finished up first. So I hope you enjoyed this video. To be continued and I'll see you next time.